Hey guys! Today's reading assignment for science teaches you about the difference between mass and weight and also teaches you about three important properties of matter which are temperature, magnetism, and density. Now we're going to learn about these different properties of matter and then um, Next time we have science, which will be not next week because you'll have social studies, but the following week we'll be doing some experiments where we talk more about properties of matter. Um, today I want to review with you reading this passage and taking notes using Cornell notes. This is my science notebook and you can take um, notes in your science notebook and use them during your quizzes. Isn't that amazing? That is one benefit of virtual school. You get to have open notes quizzes. So I'm going to take some notes. Cornell notes are amazing because you can use this structure of note taking with any form of nonfiction reading. The structure is always the same. You're always going to have a section for important ideas, vocabulary words, um, facts you want to remember, things like that. Important ideas. You're going to have another section for questions, and your questions can either be things you're wondering about or that you don't understand, or your questions can be teacher-like questions. So put yourself in the position of being the teacher and use your question words like who, what, where, when, how, and why to ask questions that you think are similar to those a teacher might ask you on a quiz. Who, what, where when, why, and of course, how. Okay, so those are our question words. And then down at the bottom when we're done, this part I'm really bad at, I'm so bad at summarizing. Okay, the, at the bottom we're going to write a one or two sentence summary where we just try to sum up the most important ideas of the passage. Now I'm bad at this because I tend to use a lot of words and go on and on and on and on, as you know. But some of you are gonna be really good at this because you're good at just being concise, straight to the point. Let's see how we go. Let's start reading mass. An object's mass is different than its weight. Mass is the amount of stuff or matter in an object. We use a balance scale to measure mass. Okay, so so far we've learned a definition of mass, which is the amount of stuff in an object, and then we learned about a tool that scientists might use to measure mass, which is a balance scale. And it looks like down here we have a balance scale. This is a picture of a balance scale, so I'm gonna label it. See how I'm marking up my notes as I go? Balance scale, balance scale. Okay, now weight is a different kind of property. Weight is a little bit different. It refers to gravity's pull on an object. Okay, I need to stop and take some notes because I'm not going to remember all this. All right, so we're learning about the difference between mass and weight. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Tool. Balance scale. Now, a balance scale is interesting because it's kind of like a comparing tool, right? Like if you draw a picture, here's your balance scale. You're going to compare an object, like maybe an apple, to an amount of matter that you put on the other side and see if you can make them equal to each other. Okay? Whereas weight is something different. Weight measures measures the pull of gravity on an object. Tool for measuring weight is a, let's see, just a regular scale, I guess. Or no, is this, this is mass also. Hmm, good question. I'm gonna put a question mark there. I'm thinking that these are both tools that you could use to measure mass, and they're saying that a weight is different because weight 
has to do with the relationship of the object and the gravity of your environment. And gravity is something that changes based on your location. Think about astronauts jumping high on the moon. They weigh less than on Earth because the moon has less gravity. However, they are still made up of the same stuff, so they have the same mass. Okay, I'm going to add that to my notes. Mass is the same regardless of location. Mass stays the same regardless of location. Doesn't matter if you're on Earth or on the moon. Your mass is the same. Weight does change based on your location. Weight changes based on location. Some locations have a much stronger pull of gravity than others. Okay, so that's the difference between mass and weight. Oh, and look, here's the caption. Silly Miss Slynn. Come on now. This is why I don't teach reading. Ha <laughs> ha. The caption tells us about the picture, right? Both of these instruments are balance scales. Even though both balances measure mass, they show mass in different ways. The scale on the left is digital. The scale on the right is a triple beam balance that you operate by hand. All right, so Miss Lynn needs to remember, always read the caption. Always read the caption. So I can add, let's see, digital scale. I can add that to my list of tools. Tool, balance scale, or digital scale. Okay, let's keep reading. We've got three more properties to learn about. Temperature. Heating or cooling an object can change its state of matter. You saw this with water. Temperature is a physical property physical property that shows how much energy an object has. Heating an object increases its energy. Cooling an object decreases its energy. The temperature of an object is measured with a thermometer. Now this makes me make a connection. I always like to show that I'm making a connection. Sometimes I'll put a little C on my paper to stand for connection. Remember we learned about how particles in matter move? And as something heats up, the particles move faster, meaning they have more energy. As it slows down or reaches like a, a solid frozen state, the particles move more slowly, meaning it has less energy. Particles in matter move. Wow, mind blown. Okay, so let me record. Temperature, that's another physical property that we're learning. Temperature, physical property. that measures energy of the particles in matter, okay? Magnetism, an object has magnetism if it contains certain metals such as iron. Magnets are attracted to magnetic objects. In other words, a magnet pulls a magnetic object closer. If an object is not attracted to a magnet, then it is non-magnetic. This one, we all have experience with this, right? Like if you have magnets on your fridge, magnetism is another physical property. Magnetism. Magnetic objects have to contain certain types of metal, such as iron, in order to be magnetic. Magnetic, magnet, oh gosh, spelling. Okay, I gotta start over. Magnetic objects contain certain types of metal, such as iron. Oh, this makes me think of a question. This is a question I'm actually wondering. It is not a teacher-like question. What other metals make an object magnetic? What other metals make an object magnetic? 
Okay, so now I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure it's steel or iron are the only two, but I'm not completely sure. I was talking to Mrs. Nauman about this yesterday and neither of us could remember and we resolved that we were going to look it up. So we'll have to come back to that one. I'm pretty sure it's iron and steel are the only two. All right, last physical property to read about density. To figure out an object's density related to other objects, first figure out if the object floats or sinks in water. Connection. This makes me think of cookie dunk experiment. We were testing the density of the cookies when we were testing to see if they would sink or float. Okay, so to figure out an object's density related to other objects, first figure out if the object sinks or floats in water. Objects with greater density will sink in water. Objects with less density will float in water. So when it says to figure out an object's density related to other objects, they just mean that you can compare the density of an object that way. Okay, so density is another physical property. Physical property related to how much mass is in an, oops, oh gosh, spelling object. And it's related to if it will sink or float. That's me running out of space. <laughs> okay, I have a whole other page. All right, the type of ball you use in a sport determines the way the sport is played. You can see this by trying a simple experiment with relative density. First, collect these types of balls. Table tennis ball, racquetball, golf ball, tennis ball, bouncy rubber ball, marble, and baseball. Fill a clear container two thirds full of water and place each ball in the water to see if it sinks or floats. Record your results on a piece of paper. Which balls are less dense than water and which balls are more dense than water? This would be a fun one to do for an experiment. I didn't even, I hadn't thought of that before. And also, I wouldn't even think of a marble as being a ball, but I guess it is. Okay, so this is basically just um, an invitation to you to try this at home with parental permission. You are not required to do this. I'm not grading it. It is not an assignment. It's something on here that's fun for you to do if you would like to. It would be kind of cool to make a prediction about which ones you think would sink and which ones would float and kind of think about the relative density that way. I think when they say relative density, that's another way of saying we're going to compare the density of these objects. This last question I do want you to answer. Which property of matter is being measured in each of these images? So we're going to look at these different types of science tools. I see a balance scale, a thermometer. This I'm pretty sure is a horseshoe magnet and a tank of water. And you tell me which property of matter is being measured in each of the images. This is something I think you could just edit in Kami and do it that way. All right, last but not least, we still have to do our summary. Um, physical properties such as, now I'm gonna let you fill in the blanks here. What are the three physical properties that we learned about? Physical properties such as blank, blank, and blank. You fill that in. Have, hmm. What do they have? How do I want to say this? Physical properties such as temperature, magnetism, and density. I'm going to say they affect the way an object moves and behaves. I think that's kind of like what they're saying with physical properties. Like it moves in different ways. The particles move. That's temperature. It has di a different way of feeling if you touch it. That's temperature too. It has different ways of behaving. Like if it sticks to a magnet or not, that's how it behaves. So that's what I'm going to say. Physical properties such as temperature, magnetism, and density affect the way an object moves and behaves. All right. Now, Boys and girls, the purpose of these notes is to teach you how to do Cornell notes, but you don't have to make your notes look exactly the way mine do. 
because you are a different human being with different thoughts and ways of understanding the world. But I do expect you to have important ideas, questions, and a summary. Happy reading.